In today's quick video, we're going to show you how to use custom tools in MTM in GibbsCam version 13. Now you can also use custom tools in milling tools as well, but this one is uh, referring to the MTM turning tools. So as you can see, I have my geometry here ready to go. If I open up my body bag here, you'll see I have imported my collet chuck ready to go. And to use custom tools, of course, you'll need to download the 3D model of whatever brand of tooling you're using. In this case, we have some Sandvik Capto tooling we're using. And as you can see, I have separated the tabs here into the chucks and tooling. So I'm going to bring out the uh, tools I use, the saw models. So when you bring in a saw model from whatever manufacturer you download, you want to put the tip of the tool at the X0, Z0, just like you would if you were touching off the tool, usually in the presetter. And here is my, of course, my OD roughing finish and uh, basing, my boring bar, my drill, and the last one my grooving tool. Now when you set up the tools, for instance my OD facing and roughing tool, usually you want it sitting in this direction, the vertical direction when you start out. Make sure the insert matches your tool there. Of course you want to tell it your offset and the setup B here. Now this is um, in most post processors this is where your B rotation gets its angle from. In the case of a DMG which uses a FANUC control on an NT machine this is negative 45 degrees because vertical on an NT machine is B0. Now on a CTX running a Siemens control that is B positive 90 and a Kuma and Mazak might be different so this will depend on your post what you put in here and your machine. And of course on the 35 degree as well and the um, drill and the boring bar as you can see they're all oriented correctly now what you can do is you click on custom and edit of course you want to have the tool highlighted that you're going to use and you bring up this edit button it brings up this dialog box and you want to make sure you're clicked on solid and then click on the button that says use selected solid that will show you the solid model tool you're going to use. And of course you normally you want tool B rotation on and the lead angle that you want on here. So if you take the face relief, add it to the lead angle, you should come up with 90 degrees there. So when you do the operations, we bring back our first process here with the 80 degree diamond. You click on the rotate tab you can see I have a five degree face relief and zero on the holder angle this is where I want it to uh, the angle at 45 degrees here to give me a five degree relief on the face and the OD and you do the same thing with all the other tools let's look at the drill here the drill is not going to ask you rotation because it knows it's uh, going to be at uh, B minus 90 and the boring bar We're at holder angle zero. You can see this is the direction it's facing. And same with the rest of them here. Now if I do a cut part render, we'll turn slice off here. Slow it down a bit. Here's our roughing tool. So you can see the use of a solid model for your rendering might help with uh, collisions with you might have with a turret, with sheet metal, and chuck jaws. So sometimes it's very helpful to have solid models of the actual tool you're going to use. Now you can see I have this finishing tool at 45 degrees. So this is of course going to give me a lot of relief both ways, but you can have it any angle you want and you can look for collisions between uh, other components on your machine tool course boring 
the slices in half, the drill and the boring, finish pass, grooving, and there you have your final part. Thank you for watching.